everyone, I'm the Nerd Next Door, and today we're going to be talking about different kinds of black holes. So a little while ago, there was a team of astronomers led by Dheeraj Pasham, possibly saying his name wrong, and they basically confirmed the existence of an intermediate mass black hole in M82, which is a galaxy that's very far away from us. And what's really cool about this discovery is that actually intermediate mass black holes are very hard to find. They're very few and far between. So we're going to talk about the different kinds of black holes today and the different masses. So first of all, if you've ever seen anything about a black hole on television or in the movies, you should probably forget all of that. So what happens in the movies with black holes? We see people going crazy when they're around black holes. We see black holes eating things like cosmic vacuum cleaners. People come back from the event horizon all the time. We see people going through black holes so they can take, you know, years off their journey or they go to alternate universes through black holes. And that's not how they work. So just, if you don't know, Black holes aren't magic, but they are really cool. So there's three different categories of black holes that you may have heard about in the media. Number one are stellar mass black holes. These are stars that collapsed and formed black holes. Number two are the supermassive black holes, and these are the black holes that are at the center of spiral galaxies. And they are just huge. They're way, way, way bigger than stellar mass black holes. And number three is the intermediate black hole. The intermediate mass black holes are things that are in between the stellar mass and the supermassive, and they're kind of an unknown thing. They're very mysterious, uh, there's not a whole lot of intermediate mass black hole candidates, and we're going to talk about them after we talk about the other two types. So firstly, stellar mass black holes. These are the black holes that we're all familiar with. This is when a star is dying and collapses to form a black hole. Now, not every star that dies will actually turn into a black hole. That, that doesn't happen. So our sun is just not big enough to ever become a black hole. Sun-like stars, you can have the white dwarf that's left over, and for more massive stars, you get the neutron star left over, and for more massive stars, you get the black hole that's left over. So th those are your basic different death stages of stars. And black hole is really reserved for more massive stars. Now, of course, a black hole, just like a star, is a massive, dense object in space. And we can think of space as a sheet, right? We can think of it as the fabric of space-time. And if you put a big old mass of something in the fabric, it's going to make an indentation. And that's really what a star is. That's what a neutron star is, and a white dwarf, and, and really any star, any massive object is going to make that indentation. So you can think of this in two dimensions, right? If you had a hammock and then you threw a bunch of people in there, there'd be a certain amount of squish right? And the more people you threw in there, the more squished it would become until you have something that's so dense that that hammock is just breaking. And that's kind of what's happened with the black hole. We have something that's so dense and so squished together, this matter is it's unbelievable, right? There's, there, there's nothing in the world that looks like the matter that's in something like a neutron star, and there's certainly nothing in the world that looks like the matter in a black hole. Now, when we say a black hole, we have to be very, very careful because there's two components, two major components of a black hole that we have to differentiate from. So there's the singularity, and the singularity you can think about as that kernel of super, super dense, very massive, but also very, very tiny stuff. And that's the kernel of doom at the center of the black hole. The event horizon is the space around the singularity. So you couldn't actually go through a black hole because there's going to be stuff in there. This matter is so densely, densely packed that even though it's a lot of mass, it's in a very small area. You have to think of this in three-dimensional space, of course. This is not two-dimensional, this is three-dimensional. But what's happened is it's so dense, but it's also so small that it has really warped the space around it. And so that area surrounding the singularity is the whole, right? This is the event horizon. And anything that gets past the event horizon is never coming back out. That's where we think of as, oh, this is a hole that sucks things in and it's the cosmic vacuum cleaner and eats things. But what's really happened is you have this tiny, 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 infinitesimally small, but extremely dense object. That's the singularity. That is the black hole. Black holes 
couldn't exist without the singularity. That matter has to be there. And so you couldn't just fly through and get to another universe. It's not like you'd ever have to worry about that though, because let's be honest, you'd be dead way before you hit the event horizon. Okay, so that is a stellar mass black hole, and the thing to bear in mind is this is how all black holes are, right? All black holes are bending the space-time around them so that you have this event horizon. Once you get past, nothing gets out. Radio waves are not getting out, light's not getting out, humans aren't getting out, satellites aren't getting out, nothing is getting out of the event horizon. This is just a, a portal of doom. And all black holes are like this. So supermassive black holes are like this, intermediate mass black holes are like this, stellar mass black holes are like this. They all have this in common. In fact, there are only three things that define a black hole. Mass, spin, and charge. But the interesting thing about black holes, and I'm sure you've heard this before, is it doesn't matter what they're made out of. So a black hole made of antimatter, or entirely of protons, or entirely of neutrons, or somehow entirely of electrons, or whatever. It, it wouldn't matter. If you started with atoms that had once been hydrogen, or helium, doesn't matter. It does not matter what the black hole is made out of. The only thing that matters is mass, spin, and charge. And we are primarily concerned with mass.